Heidi ho viewer Reno. I don't know why I'm starting with that, but it just kind of felt right. How's everyone doing? I've got some very interesting stuff to discuss for RDNA 3 and honestly just GPUs in general. So let's, well, chat shall we? So RDNA 3 of course is a successor to RDNA 2 and will bring numerous improvements in IPC and other technology, but a real key difference between RDNA 2 and RDNA 3, as many of you are aware, is the fact it is going to be chiplet based. And this brings me to a couple of things that I've been hearing and also some very interesting rumours that have been floating around on Twitter. I'll get into my own exclusive information first and then we'll kind of start delving into the midst of Twitter. And then also how uh, Nvidia and Intel are kind of waiting in the wings on their own right. So yeah, Narve 31 and 32 are both chiplet designs with Narve 33 being monolithic. But there is something very interesting that I've been hearing about 31 as well as 32. And that is, well, you know how we've been hearing for a while now that there are basically two main chiplets. Finally, we kind of have an idea of what their names are. I kind of revealed it already. It's the GCD. So we have both the GCD and MCD. And for a while, I actually did believe that the MCD was basically an IO die as well as some type of cache. Well, this does not seem to be actually accurate. In fact, from what I'm being told, the MCD is purely a cache. I'll go into the amount in just a moment. And the IO die itself is, well, not really a die. Basically, it's still part and parcel of the graphics chiplets. And I'm not exactly certain about this because I don't have like a block diagram, unfortunately, but it does make sense when you consider that Narve 33 and 34, from what I'm hearing anyway, is going to be a monolithic design. And obviously, you know, 33 and 34 are going to be SKUs, which are much lower down the stack. And we do believe that 31 is going to top out at 160 compute units, which, basically is a lot. Um, as for performance targets, I did want to get into this real quick. So I've had one person previously tell me that 2.7 times is probably inaccurate and is actually too high. And now a second person believes that it's possible, but they believe it's only going to be in certain scenarios. It's going to probably be in stuff like ray tracing or very specific benchmarks like maybe geometry testing. That was just an example. I don't honestly know what it could be, but they're thinking that that could be peak in some specifics. However, the majority of people are still telling me that 2.7 or even higher is going to be general rasterization performance. The reason I'm putting this out there is while I'm still leaning towards this being correct, I just want people to kind of brace themselves that it may be inaccurate. I personally believe we're going to see at least a two times performance increase. In fact, I believe it's going to be higher than that 2.2 to 2.3 minimum because we're hearing an awful lot of stuff that uh, NVIDIA are doing very similar and they are going to be pushing DLSS and their own technology heavily because they know that AMD is going to be competitive. Just to be clear, this is with RTX 40. Well, we assume it's going to be RTX 40, AKA Lovelace, but We'll get more into NVIDIA in just a moment. And I'm also told that there are two manufacturing processes employed by AMD to produce Narve 31 and 32. Now, I was told that we're going to see TSMC on the 5NM process produce the GCDs and the, well, let's just call it the cache for now. That is going to be produced on the 6NM process. And rather interestingly, as I was told this, someone else has leaked this very same information on Twitter. Let's quickly go over what they've said. They've said that Narve 31 is 5NM and 6NM chiplets, uh, GDDR6 256 bit bus with a 256 megabyte IC. And then obviously you can read the rest of your tweet, the tweet yourself. Now, I have to say, I'm hearing that the IC is more than this. I'm being told that um, it, the, the, the cache itself is going to be 512 megabytes, and I've now been told this by three people. However, it could be incorrect. 
basically there is a huge amount of memory which is on board our DNA free um, higher end SKUs and it does seem that this is connected of course to a 256 bit bus so AMD is still not pushing the boat out on memory configuration they're not going to be going an ultra wide bus so more like a let's say how NVIDIA have created the RTX 30 they're not going to be kind of using that as a base instead basically if you look at a lot of AMD's designs and this is part and parcel if you look at Zen or you know more modern architectures from them aka RDNA 3 there's one word which you can use and that is scalable basically AMD design a IP they design a product or an architecture if you will whatever you want to call it for the sake of this video with the idea of being able to nudge it push it into various different products i.e easily be able to scale it up or down whether it's let's say a smartphone or whether it's a high performance desktop GPU so I think this is one of the reasons they've done that and it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out now in my personal opinion RDNA 3 is also looking like it's going to have much better upsampling I've now been told by two to three people that FSR 1 how do I say it it's almost like AMD kind of getting the foot in the door for upsampling and what they wanted to do is to produce a technology to give them like a PR win and they have now we can make a really good argument of whether this should work on GTX 10 cards for example now my personal opinion is that AMD probably did the right thing here there's a couple of reasons the first is that it kicks Nvidia's DLSS tech in the shin because yes developers may implement both and we're starting to see a couple of games which have done this but in general you're gonna say that seems a lot of effort and you're probably going to go with the path of least resistance the second is that it also means that it's just easy to uh, plonk into your game you know we're hearing developers talk about 30 minutes a couple of hours or whatever and yes DLSS is also getting a lot easier to implement in games like Unreal Engine however again just the fact that it's you know agnostic it can work on consoles it can work on even slightly older GPUs I think it makes sense but getting back to what I'm being told again I'm hearing multiple people now tell me that FSR 2.0 for lack of a better word it could be called you know Donald Duck for all we know it will actually have some level of upsampling I've discussed this previously in another video so I'm not going to go over it again but basically it seems like AMD are taking a very different approach to Nvidia and it seems like the training is done more locally and I don't really know how that implementation will work however once again MLA chiplets do not seem to be part of RDNA 3 so it seems that they're making some other changes but whether or not this will be back portable to RDNA 2 for example and it will just perform inferior I don't honestly know and it will be very interesting to see how all of this comes together because the thing is again you know you still have four and eight bit operations on RDNA 2 so how they've changed these instruction sets for RDNA 3 I honestly do not know now let's talk a little bit more about Intel and Nvidia we'll start with Intel first simply because they're first alphabetically um, and this concerns DG2 so I had an exclusive very recently discussing the fact that to my knowledge DG2 was almost certainly coming to mobile first and then we would see the desktop version later on ie Intel are definitely working towards a, both a mobile and a desktop solution however and this is not talking um, about let's say server GPUs which are an entirely different kettle of fish I never understood that kettle of fish what the hell is that about anyway from what I understand this plan is almost certainly still correct however I am starting to hear some murmurs that Intel could push their GPU plans for desktop a little bit faster or maybe release either limited quantities or just a couple of SKUs now I don't know whether those SKUs are going to be the high performance SKUs or whether they're going to be lower ones if I had to guess based on what Raja Kodori did with Polaris and also what we've seen with let's say uh, AMD and Nvidia strategy they'll probably release the higher end SKUs first but again I cannot be certain 
I personally would love Intel to release their GPUs simultaneously. However, the big question at the moment is just, you know, how ready are they for this? And again, it's not just a case of like, oh, gee whiz, we're going to release the architecture because we want to compete with, um, let's say, NVIDIA and AMD. It's also a slightly more strategic thing than that that's looking outside of the discrete graphics market and basically at the TAM itself, total available market, and how Intel can best thwart certain trends which are happening. I.e., for example, AMD now are releasing their own, you know, Nava line of cards, which are starting, or chips, which are starting to go inside of mobile GPU, um, yeah, mobile solutions. Nvidia, obviously, with the RTX 30 mobiles are quite popular at the moment. And gamers, let's just be honest, they are starting to play more and more and more on laptops, and for good reason. You know, you can pick up a pretty good laptop CPU, you know, the new Ryzen processors are really good in terms of power consumption an RTX 3060 mobile or whatever. And you know what? 1080p gaming, especially with upsampling technology, you can even plonk that in, you know, you can dock it, run it on the 1440p screen. And given people are now obviously going to work or working from home or taking it to school or, you know, well, I was about to say traveling, but <laughs> I guess eventually. You know what I mean, though. Like, it's, it's a very logical option. And even people who do have a high-performance desktop solution, it doesn't mean that you are suddenly against mobile gaming, right? There's a, there's a really good argument there. So what I'm basically trying to say to you guys, I'm using way too many words for this as, as normal. However, I do think that Intel wants a tasty, tasty piece of that. Because Intel and NVIDIA and AMD are obviously... They partner on some things, but they still want, you know, that laptop sale. And if Intel can basically bundle a, you know, bundle of joy to, let's say, Acer or Dell or whomever they're selling, you know, the, the kits to, and say, okay, we can sell you the CPU, the GPU, the memory kits, everything. This is how much it's going to cost you. We can help you build the device, as well as possibly do some marketing, especially if they're a bigger partner. It could be very tempting. Um, at the moment, yes, Intel do have good CPUs, you know. They're not that bad compared to Ryzen. I mean, we can argue about it all day long. But it's not like, you know, it's not like they're really bad. Um, but they don't have any GPU solution. So it doesn't matter even if Intel had a much better processor than AMD. And the fact is, you know, with what AMD are doing with, let's say, SmartShift, for example, there's a lot of stuff, technical term, that Intel can really leverage in the future. And it's going to be very interesting to see how NVIDIA kind of face off against all of this pressure. And let's just be totally honest, guys. If you kind of look at the market, it's not too difficult to figure out why, or at least one of the reasons that NVIDIA do want to purchase ARM, all right? It's just, it's not that difficult to kind of start putting some pieces together there. And speaking of NVIDIA, and just a couple of small updates. So RTX 30 Super apparently is going to be a really big step towards Ada Lovelace. This is according to Copity7 Kimmy, although they've not really elaborated as to what this means. In fact, in one of their tweets, they've even said that the Super Refresh, whatever you want to call it, is still going to be on the same process node. So it's going to be very curious to me how all of this works. And it makes me wonder somewhat if... Well, you know what? It just makes me wonder if they're going to change something more significant in the architecture to make it more memory bandwidth friendly, or whether they're going to just simply do easy things, like increase the amount of memory bandwidth available, or whatever else and you know if you're on the same process node you can still do some architectural optimization and maybe increase cache sizes or whatever i don't honestly know what they'll do this is just me spitballing i, I haven't heard anything specific here um but it doesn't seem like the architecture is going to be a complete revolution you know it's not going to be like well, there's a reason they're calling it a refresh and they're not calling it you know rtx 40 and of course the real big hitter from NVIDIA is going to be RTX 40, aka Lovelace, and again, the performance targets I'm being told are about 2.2, 2, 
but most people are being a little more modest and saying it's around two times the RTX 3090. With that said, I think that's just about it for this video. There was some extra stuff that I wanted to discuss, but to be honest with you, I ended up rabbiting on way too much as it is. If you've enjoyed it, well, you know what to do. You click the like button because it helps us out because YouTube and engagement and all of that bollocks. And also if you click the subscribe button and the bell icon because again, YouTube, <laughs> and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.